Have you ever found yourself stuck in chronic fight or flight mode? Today I'll review how some of us can get stuck there after a prolonged period of stress. This will change the way you think about stress and how you manage it. Be sure to stick around and listen to what happens during the three phases of prolonged stress. Alex found himself constantly on edge with his mind racing with thoughts, his body tense with sensations like a rapid heartbeat, numbness, sweating, feeling irritable, exhausted, and yet he wasn't able to relax or to sleep. Now, when talking with Alex over Zoom, I could see his constant shifting, his movements, his flushed face as if he was high on adrenaline. Alex was experiencing chronic stress and he was stuck in his fight or flight mode. Now, fight or flight, and now we also add freeze, was first coined by a physiologist, Walter Cannon, in the 1920s. It's a primal reaction that prepares us to either confront or run from danger. Now, this response is triggered by the release of hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline from our adrenal glands, and this results in a series of dramatic changes in our body. During fight or flight, our heart rate and blood pressure increase to pump more blood to the muscles, preparing them for action. Our breathing quickens, it enriches our blood with oxygen, our pupils dilate, sharpens our vision. The blood flow is redirected from non-essential functions like digestion to our muscles and to our brain. And this primes our body for a very quick response. Now, the release of these hormones and the physiological changes, while I am sure helped our ancestors survive, is very rarely helpful for us in today's world. Because instead of these physical dangers... You know, we are dealing with the pressures of everyday life or traumas of the past that set off a fear response. And what's interesting about our stress response or fear response is that it can be triggered by just about anything. Now, our stress or fear response can be triggered by something internal like a thought or a worry or something that we feel in our body. And it can be triggered by something external like work pressures, financial concerns, living conditions, or relationship problems. Our bodies are built to adapt to stress, whether it's real or imagined stress. But according to a study by Brianna Chu and colleagues in 2022, if our exposure to stress is repetitive or prolonged chronic stress, the stress response can become maladaptive and can cause a lot of problems like depression, anxiety, cognitive impairment, even heart disease. Chronic stress weakens our immune system and it impacts our sleep quality and our overall well-being. So let's look deeper into what happens during a state of prolonged chronic stress and how our body tries to adapt. This will change the way you think about the impact of stress. Now, general adaptation syndrome describes three different stages of chronic stress. There's the alarm reaction stage, the resistance stage, and the exhaustion stage. Now, the alarm stage, we've all felt that. It's that initial kind of rush or whoosh, you know, of adrenaline when we feel that initial shock of fight or flight reaction. You might have felt that whoosh, you know, when somebody cut you off unexpectedly while driving. Now, after the initial shock, the body begins to calm down naturally by lowering cortisol levels, and it normalizes things like blood pressure and heart rate. During this recovery phase, your brain and your body stays alert, and it's still on alert until that stressful event is completely over, and it's not a threat any longer. However, if that stressful event keeps going, For an extended period of time, the body will adapt and it tries to cope with that higher level of stress. And what that means is that the body will continue to release stress hormones, which keep the body's physical response to stress elevated. This is called the resistance stage. And it includes symptoms like poor concentration, irritability, and frustration. And if that stressful event continues, the body will enter the exhaustion stage. Now, the exhaustion stage 
is like it sounds, and the symptoms include fatigue, burnout, depression, anxiety, and reduced tolerance to stress. And if the stressful event continues, the body's immune system will continue to weaken. And this is due to the suppressive effort effects of stress hormones on the cells of the immune system. Wow. So what can we do? Well, sometimes we cannot avoid stress, right? It's a part of life. We have to cope with stressful situations. And yet we don't want the stress level to harm us. We can combat the effects of stress by incorporating a daily stress management routine. And this is the vital This was vital for Alex's recovery. I want to add a side note here, that if you listen to my content, you know that I don't uh, encourage responding to anxiety and panic symptoms in the moment by doing a bunch of things to calm down. Those calming behaviors run the risk of becoming compulsive, creating experiential avoidance of anxiety. And you can unintentionally reinforce the anxiety cycle and encourage more anxiety and even develop panic disorder because your brain learns to fear anxiety symptoms themselves. So we don't want to avoid anxiety symptoms, right? We want to welcome them, allow them, and understand that those sensations are not harmful or dangerous. What I'm talking about in this discussion is prolonged chronic stress and the need to incorporate certain practices to combat that chronic stress. So there are several proven ways to manage stress effectively. I'm going to review a few, and I encourage you to incorporate into your daily routine what you would most enjoy and what fits into your lifestyle. If you absolutely hate something that I mentioned, then that's not going to help you reduce your stress level. So here are some suggestions for daily stress management and why they're helpful. Long-term moderate exercise. Now this is recommended for the prevention of cardiovascular disease and blood pressure control. Walking. Now walking meditation, walking in nature can help to reduce blood pressure and reduce muscle tension and regulate your breathing. Yoga and Tai Chi can help you to improve your ability to recover after a stressful event. Deep breathing exercises like diaphragmatic breathing or square breathing can decrease your heart rate, breathing, and adrenaline response. Taking breaks from information overload, including breaks from social media, your devices, and news feed will help you to stop overthinking and catastrophizing. Eating healthy meals, high in nutrition, and doing your best to keep a consistent sleep schedule and avoiding excessive alcohol, tobacco, and substance use. Connect with supportive people. Talk about what you're feeling, what you're dealing with, how you feel about it. If you're not in a supportive community where you feel safe to share, I want to invite you to join the Warm Heart Hub. It's a mental well-being community filled with compassionate and understanding people. And I'm there as well to answer your questions and to offer support. You can find the Warm Heart Hub at pagepradco.com. Until next time, I'll see you in session. Take care. Bye-bye.